Looking through brilliant artworks by Leonardo da Vinci, you can come across not only aircraft sketches that were significantly ahead of their time, but also weird wheels such as these. Judging by the comments he wrote on those sketches, these, in his opinion, were what perpetual motion machines could look like. Humankind has been dreaming about them since the dawn of time. Hypothetically, these machines can work infinitely or even create energy out of nothing. In this video, I'll answer the following questions. What is the secret behind the Da Vinci wheels? Did Nikola Tesla really invent a car with an infinite energy generator? And what perpetual motion machine model came closest to success? What kind of perpetual motion machines did ancient and medieval design engineers build? One of the most significant discoveries of the ancient world was made in the 3rd century by Greek engineer Archimedes. That's right, the guy who understood that the water in his bathtub was rising upward as his body pushed it out of the way. When the realization hit him, he screamed, Eureka! This discovery was called Archimedes' principle. His disciples tried to take this as a basis to build a perpetual motion machine. You'll need an aquarium with a tight lid, but without any fish inside. A light ball filled with air, a heavy load, a fastener, and a metal rod, plus a stand for the wheel and nuts. Using all these materials, build an Archimedes sphere like this and pour water inside. In theory, the mechanism will need only one single push to start spinning forever, because the load always drags the ball down, and the ball in turn will be pushed out of the water and maintain itself in motion. So what's wrong then? The thing is, the friction of the metal rod and the water itself against the aquarium glass will eventually surpass the buoyant force affecting the ball. The mechanism will stop working within several minutes, and all the poor fish got kicked out of their home. Home, and for what? But let's get back to the Da Vinci wheel. We need to install a few skewed bars inside it for a dozen metal balls. They're supposed to keep rolling and always tip the wheel in a specific direction. But even if you 3D print this machine, you'll have to move it yourself. That's because the metal balls exert equal pressure on the bars on either side, so the wheel is quickly brought back to its equilibrium. And being the genius that he was, Da Vinci figured that out even before trying to build the device. But is it impossible to make some thin and smart mechanism able to compensate for the energy loss? What kind of perpetual motion machines were invented by clockmakers? Cornelius Drebbel, a Dutch engineer, was a kind of Elon Musk of the 17th century and created innovative clockwork that they said was able to run perpetually. A glass sphere, a plastic hose, a nozzle, and a pipe tee. That'll be a really strange order in your online shopping cart. The sphere must freely rotate on the stand, and you'll need to insert the pipe tee into its top. Mind that it should be an airtight construction. Pour fluid down the hose, then attach one end containing air to the sphere and leave the other end open. It seems unbelievable, but the fluid in the hose will visibly oscillate during the day. It'll make the sphere spin, which in turn will wind the clock, and the whole thing will keep going endlessly. But how? Drebbel claimed that the fiery spirit of the air helped it run for hours. But actually, there's no magic at all. The fluid in the hose is set in motion by changes in atmospheric pressure. A similar principle was used by James Cox in the 18th century, except that he wound the clock with the help of a mercury barometer instead of a hose filled with fluid. As a result, it was enough to wind the device once and watch it work for decades. But let's face it, both Drebbel and Cox's mechanisms relied on external forces to gain momentum. They're fueled by the atmosphere of the Earth, and they're certainly not perpetual motion machines. Besides, in the same 18th century, Emily de Châtelet, a French scientist, derived a principle saying that kinetic energy can't come from nothing. This became the basis for the Law of Conservation of Energy, which states that energy can't be created only transformed from one form to another. At the same time, power loss is inevitable in any mechanism, given friction and other additional aspects. This means that without external support, all possible machines will stop sooner or later. 
Perhaps it was time to forget about perpetual motion machines and move on. But those inventors were hopeless romantics. So they turned to the power that had been considered magic for many centuries. What were the magnet-based perpetual motion machines? This perpetual magnetic wheel was patented in 1823. Get a wheel cap, one metal ball, and a strong permanent magnet. Pay attention that the magnet should be straight, not curved. We need the ball to roll inside the wheel freely. Bring the magnet close to it. Your task is to spin the wheel and make the magnet keep the ball endlessly rolling down. The ball's movement will set the wheel in motion and the frictional force will be compensated for by the magnetic force. Now, that looks credible. We can perfect this principle if we take a rotary engine designed by Soviet engineer Valery Dudashev as an example. It's based on a big ring magnet and two disks with small magnets. The same poles repel each other and this makes the shaft rotate. So why can't such perpetual motion machines be installed in all of our cars? The problem is that even magnets can't do anything about the law of conservation of energy. Those of them that we call all permanent still can't produce energy infinitely. Even the best of such magnets wear out in a thousand years. And if we try to extract converted mechanical energy from this object, it won't last more than 10 years. At the same time, to generate enough power for an electric car to move, we need a multi-ton permanent magnet, and the car will be just pinned to the ground with a load like this. But even then, inventors weren't ready to quit their pursuit of the perpetual motion machine and resorted to another physical force. Is there anybody who's managed to construct an electric perpetual motion machine? There are legends around Nikola Tesla, another genius inventor, and the car engines he allegedly made without any visible power source. But most likely, those were various prototypes of electric wires that didn't need gasoline and therefore looked so unreal. And yet, at the beginning of the 20th century, Tesla patented an unlimited energy machine. It includes an antenna that you can construct from a large piece of plywood and a sheet of foil, copper wires, and a capacitor to store electrical energy. The antenna should be placed high above the ground, on a roof for instance. Then it needs to be connected to one of the capacitor's poles with the help of the wire. The second pole must be grounded and connected to the communication pipe. As a result, the capacitor charges up slowly but surely. But where does the electricity come from? Tesla said that it's all thanks to the luminiferous ether. Let me translate this into the language of science. Electric current is produced by any electromagnetic radiation that comes into contact with the antenna. It can be anything from solar radiation to cosmic rays. Now what? Can we assemble this device and forget about all our electricity bills? Not so fast. You'll have to wait a whole day until you accumulate enough power just to charge your phone. And the antenna will have to be the size of a football field. Another perpetual electric generator was made in the mid-20th century by Romanian engineer Nikolai Carpin. Museologists say that the Carpin pile, which uses platinum and gold electrodes immersed in pure sulfuric acid, has provided energy for more than 70 years. However, scientists believe that it just transforms external heat into power. On second thought, Tesla and Carpin's inventions have indeed come close to being perpetual motion machines. We can't deny that they produce some energy. Well, at least as long as they're rays of light and warmth on our planet. I mean, until the heat death of the universe. But is perpetual motion genuinely impossible? In 2021, German scientists first created a time crystal. This microscopic object repeatedly changes its state over time and can go on like this forever. Although the crystal doesn't generate any energy, it doesn't lose it either, despite friction or other influencing factors. May I remind you that this was the main stumbling block to all the perpetual motion machine inventors of the past. So, could we finally be on the verge of a breakthrough?